for your information, autophagy is not always a good thing. Before jumping on the autophagy and fasting bandwagon, watch this video about whether or not autophagy is good or bad. First of all, I'm a huge proponent and believer in the health benefits of autophagy and fasting. I've even written a book on the topic called Metabolic Autophagy, so I'm one of the biggest proponents of it. But there are still a lot of misconceptions and fallacies about the benefits of autophagy, and it's not always a good thing. A few months ago, I made a video about the negative side effects of autophagy called the dark side of autophagy. People went nuts and they said that I was shilling for the big pharma industry and fear-mongering people to not fast. Unfortunately, they're just repeating the words of other influencers, other fasting gurus and some other doctors without doing their own research. Autophagy is a central component to life extension seed in caloric restriction that recycles old worn-out cells and proteins. Inadequate autophagy is a major determinant of aging. However, autophagy does have its negative side effects and it can also harm the organism. So, in the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about why autophagy is not always good and when it can be actually harmful. You underestimate the power of the dark side. Number 1. Autophagy and Cancer One of the main autophagy genes, ATG6 Becklin 1, has been found to suppress cancerous growth in humans. However, sometimes it can actually promote cancer due to the self-replicative process. The process of autophagic self-eating can enhance tumor cell fitness against environmental stressors, which makes them more resilient against starvation and chemotherapy. Autophagy basically triggers a survival response, which strengthens not only your healthy cells, but also makes the malignant ones stronger. Fasting and autophagy, they don't promote cancer growth or they don't feed cancer. But there's still hormetic stressors that strengthen cancer cells against environmental stressors and starvation. As you deprive the cancer cells from certain nutrients during fasting and starvation, then they inevitably will adapt and they get stronger. So it's gonna be more difficult for you to kill them. But the same applies to healthy cells. So with fasting and autophagy, you can make your healthy cells stronger against chemotherapy and other forms of ailments. Autophagy as a phenomenon doesn't feed cancers deliberately. It's just that during autophagic degradation, you create energy and nutrients that the cancer cells simply steal and use to feed themselves. Number 2. Autophagy and Hypoxia There are many stressors that trigger autophagy such as starvation, energy deprivation, exercise, the cold, heat and even oxygen deficiencies or hypoxia. Hypoxia inducible factor HIF is a major actor in cell survival to hypoxia that induces autophagy. HIF gets activated when oxygen tension decreases which then increases autophagy activation. Hypoxia increases blood vessel growth that supports angiogenesis. This allows your cells to become more oxygenated because they build a better network of blood vessels. Unfortunately, it can also promote tumor expansion, metastasis and drug resistance by supplying the cancer cells with more oxygen. Hypoxia-induced autophagy promotes tumor cell survival and adaptation to anti-angiogenic treatment. Again, it's not autophagy directly sustaining cancer or tumors, it's the cancer cells adapting to hypoxia and stress and using autophagy to survive. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Number 3. Autophagy and Tumorigenesis Cancer cells have higher rates of glycolysis or glucose metabolism, also known as the Warburg effect. Hypoxic environments increase transportation of GLUT1, which helps with transporting glucose into cells. This can promote tumor metastasis by giving more glucose to the cancerous cells. In healthy cells, autophagy has a protective tumor suppressive role, whereas in advanced cancers, it can be both tumorigenic as well as tumor suppressive. Loss of autophagy genes like Becklin 1, ATG5, etc. can promote onset of tumors, so not enough autophagy can also be detrimental. At the same time, too much autophagy promotes tumor survival fitness by making it stronger against stressors. Basically, when malignant tumor cells are put under energy stress and nutrient deprivation, then they're gonna survive thanks to autophagy and autophagy is also gonna make them stronger against future stressors. Research also shows that autophagy plays a different role in different stages of the tumor growth. In the initial stages of tumorigenesis, autophagy will suppress the growth and proliferation of tumors, but in the later stages, when the cancer cell has become more stronger, then autophagy can actually promote tumorigenesis, or at least it's gonna maintain its functioning for longer. In terms of fighting cancer, 
then intermittent fasting is much more better for disease prevention and maintaining adequate autophagy instead of using it as cancer treatment when you're already sick. Actual treatment of certain cancers and tumors would probably be more effective with specific targeting autophagy of certain cells that maintains healthy cells and targets cancer cells. Chaperone-mediated autophagy targets hypoxia-inducible factor for lysosomal degradation. Ketone body stimulates CMA, which only eliminates specific proteins. This makes the ketogenic diet a potential alternative to macroautophagy. Some form of hyperbaric oxygen therapy would also be something to add to circumvent hypoxia. Number 4. Fasting and Bacterial Infections Xenophagy is the removal of pathogens by autophagy. It has many immune-strengthening benefits. However, some bacteria like Brucella use autophagy to replicate themselves. So it's not that black and white with autophagy. Some bacteria and viruses can survive thanks to the replicative process. Whereas in most cases, the prevention aspect of using autophagy in adequate amounts is enough to protect against the disease from forming in the first place. Number 5. Autophagy and Muscle Loss Exercise induces autophagy in peripheral tissues and in the brain. Autophagy is essential to support skeletal muscle plasticity in response to endurance exercise. However, excessive exercise can lead to excessive autophagy and result in muscle atrophy and catabolism. Fasting and exercise both are catabolic stressors that are amazing in moderation but detrimental in excess. Autophagy is required to preserve muscle mass and maintain myofiber integrity. Deleting the ATG7 gene causes muscle atrophy and abnormal mitochondrial functioning, which accelerates aging. Maintaining muscle mass is also critical for increased health span and longevity because you're naturally going to lose lean tissue as you age. Without adequate autophagy, your muscle cells and fibers will become too weak against catabolic stressors like fasting and starvation. If your body is adapted to autophagy and fasting, you'll also experience less catabolism during exercise. How much autophagy is good for you depends on many factors such as how much lean muscle mass you have, how hard you exercise, what's your diet, how many macronutrients you eat, protein, carbs and fats, what's your medical condition and what's your overall fasting schedule as well. In most cases, fasting and autophagy are amazing for disease prevention and anti-aging effects. It's just that in some situations, it's not the best thing. Definitely don't think that it's the end-all be-all that's gonna cure everything, because it won't. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I myself still think that autophagy and fasting are one of the biggest contributors to my health, and they're quite amazing. However, I'm not gonna blindfold myself or become biased and everything else is gonna fix itself. The truth is that there's solid research showing that autophagy is good, but in some situations it can also be bad. If you want to know how to master autophagy and fasting for both performance and longevity, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, and notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. The plans you refer to will soon be back in our hands.